Print is is the discipline which has the biggest potential to like for media. So I'm not a guy who is doing a lot of Google Street View. Why do you start all your training sessions at full hours or half past? <laughs> uh, reaching that level, what I have in Sprint in Forest will be extremely difficult. Do you always check the control numbers? Um, <laughs> No, <laughs> there are very big motivation is, of course, the European Championship, which will come to Belgium. In just a moment, I'm going to have a chat with Yannick Michels, a very accomplished orienteer, sprint runner, and I'm going to be talking uh, with him about many different things, a little bit about his career, a little bit about his motivation, a little bit about picking up the correct route choices during the sprint distances, why he likes running sprints and why he likes orienteering in general. So lots of interesting things and I hope you will really enjoy it. Stay with us until the very end. Ladies and gentlemen, Yannick Michels. Welcome everyone. My name is Tom and this is Into the Forest I Go channel. Today I'm talking with Yannick Michels. And we will be talking about many different things, but the core of our chat today is going to be focused on the sprint distance and the route choices around uh, the sprint distance. So stay with us if you want to learn how um, not only Yannick got into all orienteering and how he's doing and whether he's having fun or not, but also how to be a professional sprint runner, how to choose the right route choices and uh, do it as uh, well as possible without making any unnecessary mistakes. So welcome, Yannick. Very nice to have you with me today. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Awesome. So um, I'll start before we go, you know, go into all the um, neat things around picking up root choices. Let's talk a little bit more about orienteering itself and uh, you as an orienteering one, runner. So if you can give me a little bit of an insight of how you got into the adventure with orienteering, how it all began for you. Actually, it happened by by accident. Uh, I've been doing athletics since I was seven years old. And then around the age of 12, uh, my parents uh, or we, our family decided to move in Belgium, not extremely far away from our old uh, city, but an hour. So in that point, I needed to change to another athletics club. And it was uh -huh. there, my former coach at that moment, who was actually an orienteer. And in the mid-season, actually in the off-season, he... He, he did one orienteering session and uh, I really, really liked it. So, yeah, that was <laughs> the accident, uh, how I, I got into orienteering. Yeah. How old were you then? Um, when I became the first time I did orienteering, I was 14, 14 years old. Okay. So compared to a lot of like uh, Scandinavian runners, for example, or, or orienteers who are, yeah, where their parents are doing the sport, they they probably have seen it, have done it since uh, they were born. For me, it was actually quite late. So uh, yeah. yeah, I was fourteen. So yeah, definitely. And I actually want to uh, emphasize that because um, I I I know that there is a saying that um, sometimes we see children that are doing very well on track or running some cross country, and then um, when we see that they are like. 14, 15 years old, sometimes we, we, we say, oh, it's too late to become a good orienteering orienteer at this point, right? But that's not true. You're one of the examples. And I'm sure there are more out there. But, you know, you can become a world uh, championship medalist even when you start orienteering that late. So, you know, if, if you're in that basket, uh, are you talking to the viewers, then just don't give up, right? There is always hope and chance for you. Yeah, of course it took uh, I'm I'm 31 now so uh, it, it took 17 years to 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 get into the the highest level so of course it's easier when I would have if yeah learned it from when I was a child but uh, yeah in the beginning of course it, I didn't do it so serious it's only from 2011 2012 that I started to to really see uh, like I have some potential in the sport and I really went for it. So um, yeah, between 2004 and 2011, of course, I've, I've run some championships as a, as a junior. I had some good results, but uh, yeah, nothing special. So I think 
And I see that also in, in, for example, like athletics, that maybe if you, you're not a superstar in the, in the juniors, but uh, just do consistent training and then become a good senior, it's possible to, to reach that level. Yeah. So I, I rather like it right like it is right now. I never had like very good results in the junior ages, but now it's actually, yeah. I think I'm one of the best sprinter in tiers in the world, so I'm I'm proud I I achieved that. Yeah, I definitely think so as well. That's why I was so happy when you accepted the invitation to talk, and I'm also super happy that you know the passion for orienteering kept you running for all of those years. Otherwise, you probably wouldn't be here with us. Yeah, I, I think that's the one thing. Uh, like I said before, I've done athletics since I was seven years old, and. I don't think if 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 orienteering wasn't coming on my my path when I was 14 I don't I'm not sure if I would still be like doing athletics at the, or at least not at the highest level. Uh, I take a lot of enjoyment out of yeah the different terrains, the different countries. There is a lot of traveling involved in orienteering uh, yeah. so I'm always excited to go to new places and I think that keep me going even am I, that I'm already 31 at the moment. It's not extremely old i would say but it's uh, an age where some 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 people start thinking about stopping but for me it's yeah i enjoy it so much so i i still hope to do many years of uh orienteering at the highest level so good to hear so why, why do you think you wouldn't have continued your career in athletics uh, athletics uh, i've tried of course in the past to to achieve also some 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 results over there but it's uh, i think it's mentally a, a very tough sport uh, also the like the competition from the from the african runners is is, is extremely high so yeah. if you want to achieve the the same level with i would say in orienteering in in athletics it's it's yeah you really need to be like jakob ingebrigtsen for example so yeah, I think the like I said before, the enjoyment of of the different places we we travel to for orienteering. I think that's that's the key point for uh, for me to keep going. And yeah, of course, uh, it's unsure if I would make it in athletics, uh, but I think I think not to be honest. Okay, all right, fair enough. Um, so, wh why do you uh, focus more on sprints and not on the on the forest races? Because this is what you do, right? Yeah, yeah. The, the main reason is, of course, my background. Uh, one reason is that I came quite late into the sport, so the basics I had to learn my myself mostly. <clears throat> like nowadays in Belgium, there is some 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 kind of project and there is some coaching, but to be honest, in the beginning, I've done a lot on my on my own. So. Um, I noticed quite quickly that sprint was something I could uh, do and learn from Belgium. We have we have good maps, we have sprint terrains, and uh, also with my athletics background, with my my strong run running, it's something I can easily yeah do in Belgium. Uh, and I believe if you really want to become a good forest orienteer, uh, either there need to be a lot of support from 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 the team in your country or either you need to have the terrains and the terrains you can find more abroad in my opinion the 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 forest terrains in belgium are not that difficult yeah. uh, especially i live in the in the northern part of, of of belgium in flanders and it it's extremely flat so yeah. uh, we have some fun terrains to orienteer but they are so fast and and not the most tricky ones so um yeah, that's the main reason that that sprint was, and I also noticed in my results, of course, that that was the the discipline where where I could achieve uh, the highest um, positions. What what do you like about the sprint distance running? Except, of course, the, the for, from the fact that you're naturally more predisposed to run it because of all the things that you've just mentioned. Is it is it something else that you feel like I, I really really enjoy about running the sprints? Uh, I think the, the nice thing, and I'm now talking about the individual sprint, it is, yeah, it's somewhere between 12 and 15 minutes. Uh, it's mostly at a very high speed you can run it. So I really enjoy also, if I do normal running competitions, the, the around the five kilometer competitions, I really enjoy that. Just that, like that 15 minute all out. So that's the fun thing about sprint, that it's this distance. Uh, and 
yeah it's always in or at least in in the world champs they try to find some 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 special places to run in so True. yeah um yeah okay yeah, if i of course <laughs> i think results wise that's the main reason that that, that i enjoy it of course but um yeah it's something i can i can train well from in belgium uh so yeah it's just fun <laughs> It feels like you're a very, very competitive person. Would you say that it's true? Uh, uh, yeah, actually, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like, I, I like, yeah. I like training. Of course, yeah, that's the main thing. I'm, uh, I like training a lot. People who, who know me, who follow me, for all, for example, on Strava, knows that uh, I'm the one who who like to train. I like to train a lot. Uh, but of course, you train a lot to be well in competitions, and yeah. especially if I compete in 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 a sprint race, I, I want to win, of the, win it, of course, or I try to win it. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm competitive, let's say, yes. Good. I mean, that's definitely helpful. Um, all right. What, what do you think uh, is specific about running sprint distances compared to the forest races, for example? I think um, what I've noticed again in the, in the World Cup here in Switzerland last weekend, I think... Uh, basic running speed and uh or your level in running is is a bit more important in sprint i feel than in in in, in forest um uh, so i would say you have to be at least quite strong runner especially on the on the faster sprint races um i think that's that's number one the the, the speed you have need to have in your in your legs so that means running or be able to run a fast three and a fast 5k uh that's already a key point and then the difference with with forest of course when you leave a control or when you go to a control you need to make quick decisions but in sprint it's extremely quick you you don't have a lot of time in forest you can sometimes use some seconds uh to decide and stand still and make your decision but in sprint that's mostly out of the question you make your decisions during your running uh, yeah. when you're running very fast so uh, yeah doing that is 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 something you need to to train or need to train on a lot um so yeah forest and sprint it's it's very hard to to compare in my my opinion when you were talking about the, the speed that you need to have for the sprint races, what came uh, to my mind was just the recent win at the long distance for Daniel Hoofman, who I think is definitely currently not the fastest runner no. among the whole pack, but it just shows that uh, the, the long distance or in general the forest distances, uh, they actually promote uh, uh, several different skills rather than just pure speed, which is of course, very, very um, important during the sprint, right? Yeah, I think and what I've noticed also in sprint is if, if, if for example, Daniel, if we take him and uh, we take me and we just do a 5K on track against each other, I will probably beat him with more than a minute. <laughs> yeah. uh, but if we do an orienteering race against each other, it will be uh, quite close. So, um, of course, the difference comes with my max speed is higher than his max speed. Uh, but my max speed orienteering wise and his max speed orienteering wise is quite similar. So uh, I've said a lot to, to people asking me these questions. It's, it's impossible to, to read the map at, at the speed that I'm usually running a, a three or a 5K. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the one who gets his max speed as high as possible and be able to to read the map, yeah, that's I think that's the most important. So for me, it's still I believe that trying to be a fast runner is 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 something important, very important in sprint. So uh, there are a few runners. Daniel is for example an example where he's not maybe the fastest runner, but he's very stable and he, again his max speed. With a map or reading the map is 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 is, is very good. It's very strong. True. So, um, but I think now Denmark was a big big example of 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 that uh, sprinter orienteering is 
changing a lot. I think uh, now they split it walk in, in both forest and sprint separately. Yes. More runners are focusing on, 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 on the sprint as well. And I felt at least in Denmark that uh, the average running level of everyone has, has increased a lot. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's probably something that you would expect, right? When everybody's preparing for the sprint, suddenly yeah. it goes there are the forest races for the World Cup, uh, sorry, not Cup, but World Championship, then, yeah, of course, the level of everybody should yeah. have gone up I, a little I, bit. I, I remember 2015, uh, I was, yeah, it was the year I ran both my five and three key, three kilometer personal best. Uh, I was very confident at that moment I had the speed, and I know at that point that I was for sure the fastest of the field. Yeah. Um, but uh, if I see now or what I've looked now last year, that more and more runners have, have, have yeah, have to also has also like done some more just running competitions. Yeah. Uh, Tim Robertson, for example, uh, his running level has become a lot better than it was in the past, and uh, I think more and more guys is are doing like this. There's uh, yeah, sprint orienteering is changing, and yeah. Once again, I think your running speed is still the key to success for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I have to admit that I'm not a huge fan of running sprints myself, um, mostly because uh, I'm getting injured all the time when I'm running too fast. <laughs> and I also I prefer... think, yeah, for, for the, the, the good thing is like, yeah, where I live, 80, especially in winter time, 80% of my training is on hard, hard surfaces. So... I'm I'm very very used to to run on on on, on asphalt on, on harder ground. Uh, for me, it's the opposite. When I come a week now here in Switzerland on training camp, every morning when I come out of bed, <laughs> I feel every muscle in my body that I'm usually not not using. So um, of course, it's what you train for, and that's why I'm here now also in 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 Switzerland to to get stronger in into the forest. But I still believe. Uh, yeah, this bit more forest orienteering will will develop also uh, my sprint orienteering. Yeah, so we are kind of opposites. I, I do almost all of my training on the soft ground, and that's why I prefer the forest. I just love the nature as well. Uh, but but I do have I do have huge hopes for the sprint distance because I think that this is actually something that could get us into the mainstream media, the um, you know um, Olympic Games eventually. As I think this is just a little bit easier to organize than everything else, and it's faster. It takes less screen time, so maybe you know, um, TV wise and production wise uh, for the for the big competitions, this might actually be the format that uh, will get us yeah, to the masses. If uh, of course I have a lot of friends in in athletics and also a lot of athletics people who are following me in orienteering. And sprint is something I can easily explain to them. That's also yeah. something they understand. But uh, if they saw the, like for example, the World Cup last weekend in Switzerland, they, 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 they can't believe why the course is only fourteen kilometer <laughs> and the winner is running more than one and a half hours. So they always asking, what, what are you doing, <laughs> doing there? So I think for someone who doesn't know anything about orienteering. Sprint is is the discipline which has the biggest potential to to like for media for, exactly. for audience. Water. Of course, I'm an orienteer myself, and I 100% enjoy this this forest orienteering, and uh, I really like it as well. But uh, if we just think out of the box, and if we want to get our sport bigger, I think we need something more fancy for the for the audience. Yeah, and absolutely. Not sprint and not maybe also this knockout sprint relay that that kind of thing, which are shorter, easier to explain to the people, easier to follow inside cities. I think that's that's uh, yeah the way to improve. Yeah, absolutely. I was just going to say that this this format of the knockout sprint is actually quite interesting as well, and I and I think it's it's a very very thought, uh, thoughtful experiment to to have. All right, so um, let's move into the main thing. So let's talk more about the root choices and the specific techniques that uh, are connected with picking the best path for the for the sprint legs. What is your general strategy in this area? 
Um, of course, every sprint is different. Even people wouldn't say that, uh, um, but I believe uh, running different sprints in different terrains in different countries are, are extremely important. Of course, the routine is is quite similar every time, but it's the same in forest, I would say. I think uh, the only thing what I already said before is in sprint, you need to make much quicker decisions. And these decisions you make or try to make at points where either it's easy to read a map or uh, it's a bit difficult to explain. But uh, for me, I, I like to, in, in sprint, it's, you you work in my opinion a lot from control to control. You have of course the because the speed is so high, it's often shorter legs. Um, so you plan not a lot in advance. Um, of course, there is some possibilities to to look on like a longer route chase, choose yeah. on a easier part in 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 the course. But mostly you need to be like very focused the whole the whole time. Uh, especially if they make the, the course rather tricky on an easy course that's different but um, yeah what would I say that are, are key points for me um, of course in, in sprint you do a lot of in and outs I would say so it's often you're crossing a, a big square for example and you need to be on one side of the square for your let's say third control but passing the square, you can already look out where, for example, you need to be later uh, entering another part of the square or another alley out of the square. So those key points uh, are very, very, very useful in sprint and I, li I like to use. So always knowing where to go and where to come out and go out to the next control. Mm -hmm. um, then something which actually has come to my mind, uh, running along a road where it's a bit difficult to see where to enter, for example, to the left or to the right. Uh -huh. uh, usually there are some points on the other side, maybe a bit outside of your actually entrance to the control, which you could use. So it could be a really tricky leg looking in, into the map, but actually if you use some, some key, key elements, Yesterday, for example, we had a we had a last part in our forest orienteering through a city, and there we had a big fountain on the left side, and it showed easily where to enter uh, into the control. So right. in sprint, this kind of stuff is very important. Okay, um, and uh, when you think about picking the route choices, do you always pick the shortest one or? Do you sometimes even go for a longer one, uh, even though, for example, um, you think that it, it, it you obviously you will have to cover the longer distance, but maybe it will be just easier to realize you will have more time to read the map forward into the race. And I'm not talking, of course, about the contours, because if you uh, add contours to it, of course, sometimes longer might be faster because there is less climb, but let's assume it's flat. Uh, in the past, uh, actually, in the beginning, when I focused on a bit more on orienteering, I usually, or sprint orienteering, sorry, I usually picked the longer one, which was easier on the map and where I could use my running speed. But I've noticed nowadays that I pick more the shorter ones. <laughs> so um, either my, my orienteering speed, the max speed we have talked about before, I think that one has increased and I'm now able to, to orientate also the more tricky legs uh, mm -hmm. at a higher speed. And often I go also for the, the shortest way, of course, because in orienteering it's often, or in sprint orienteering, it's often just seconds yeah. uh, dividing the, the runners. So um, yeah. It depends a lot on the terrain, but uh, I, I would assume or say that the, the shortest is mostly the best one. Right. So even, even if it has some turns that you have to go through along the way, it's still worth it as long as you can um, use your head during the speed that you're going to be running. Yeah, 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 so long if you have control of, of, the, of the map of your orienteering and you can have the speed high enough i think it's it's for sure uh you should do that okay um how much do you think that uh, the memory 
plays part in in running the sprint orienteering. What I'm thinking of is that um, it probably makes a lot of sense to have a look at the map, figure out your route choice, and then remember, okay, I'm going here, I'm going to um, have the small building on the left, then I'm turning into the alleyway on the right, and just, you know, remember the whole route so that you don't have to look at the map too often, and then you, you can just focus on running fast. How, how, how often do you do that? Uh, or how often do you actually check out check out the map and and to read um, the, the the map is still your your the, your best friend that's the one you're using the most of course but like you said you can have this memory where you know okay i need to go the second street to the right then the first to the left and then again the third to the right so that's some kind of memory you use for example, in really old cities where there are just roads and buildings, it's very, very useful, this technique. Uh, in Italy and Spain, they have maps like this where it's it's very useful to just, okay, I need to go the first to the right and the second to the left. You can really there, you follow the buildings and, and uh, that's mostly on memory. Um, but uh, of course, you need to keep direction very well on, on on the map so i still reading the map is 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 still very uh intense in in sprint orienteering so what you're saying is that even if you feel like you know where you're going but you have a chance to look at the map you still would look at the map at least for example to check the control that is yeah yeah, yeah. I, I, I do I, I i like to do it yeah i've seen some video from the World Cup in Boros uh, in May, and they were they were filming uh, actually me running to the second last control, and it was a rather easy control, and I I had didn't see it. It was also a confrontation for myself, and I I they they it showed on the map or on the video that I was looking on the map several several times to to recheck mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. what I was doing. So yeah, it's not just that running and. Um, um, or you should read the map always. Yeah, a funny thing is that sometimes you don't even remember how many times you looked at the map, right? No, no, no. That's <laughs> that video was it was on Twitter and someone was like, uh, I think they made some call like, uh, yeah, they were showing how many people, how much people were looking on the map, and they used me as an example. And it was on two, three hundred meters just running. I looked four, five times on the map. Uh, yeah. All right. Um, how, how precise do you get when it comes to actually attacking the control itself? So you're very close to control. I'll, I'll give you an example. Sometimes, I, I definitely am guilty of doing this sometimes. I'm like reading the map and I'm like, okay, I will turn right. There, there will be like a, um, a, a small square inside between the buildings and somewhere on the right side, I will have the control, right? But it's somewhere on the right side. I'm not actually 100% sure what the control is at, where, which corner, behind which corner it's going to be. So I'm kind of running in and looking around. Okay, is it? Oh, there it is, right? Do you have that or do you rather try to be as precise as possible so that you don't waste these precious seconds while actually attacking the control. For me, this, this starts already in the start box. Uh, when we when we get on our, our control description, I mostly go through it and look at um, objects or control points where it's either in or outside and corners. So I pick them. Mostly it's not all of them. Some are just very visible. And you will notice also during running the course that some controls you, yeah, you will just of the corner and you will see the control so yeah. there are controls like that but of course you need to the nose to, for example which side of a of a uncrossable wall or a sure. crossable fence or hatch uh, there i know exactly on which which side i need to be otherwise you're wasting a lot of of time definitely yes but i'm not talking about situations like that because i, I do exactly what you said right I, even at the starting boxes i check the corners because that's a big mistake, right? I'm talking about a situation where you're going into the small area and you know the control is there somewhere. You're you're on the right side of the wall fence or whatever, uh, but you know it can be, uh, let's say, hidden behind a tree, right? And you didn't read the details and you run and you don't see the control because the tree is big, wide, 
right with there and it's covering the control and then you panic a little bit oh it should be here it's not here where is it supposed to be and then you check the description oh it's like the tree the northern part also oh, that, that's why i haven't seen it. it's hidden for me i have to go from the up from another side so that's what i'm talking about does, does this happen or or um it's not an issue um i think less because uh once again in 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 the highest level in sprint i i've won races with seconds but i lost races with a few seconds so these are points where you can take those seconds easily so uh i think i always know the object i'm orienteering to like for example you said now a tree i think mm -hmm. that's clear in in a city you don't have a lot of trees so usually True. when the control is at the at the tree it's very visible um so and i what i also notice in sprint or on the international bigger events controls are not really hidden so uh if you're orienteering close to the to the point you will actually see the control yeah. very easily yeah, in yeah. my and, opinion and, and that's actually i think according to the guidelines of the sprint course building uh, because the, the emphasis in the sprint course is supposed to be on picking the root choices and, and, and not leading the root choices the properly and, and not looking for the control itself. Yeah, so it, it totally makes sense. Another question that came to my mind while, while we were talking about it, do you always check the control numbers? Um, no. <laughs> and uh, last month I've, uh, I've, I was invited for the German championship in, in sprint. Uh, we had a qualification, uh, very easy. I, I was uh, just needed to do the course uh, and qualify for the final, but I was disqualified. There were two controls, maybe a bit too close to each other on the same object, uh, and I punched the wrong one. So, uh -huh. so after that, uh, I, I came to my mind like, yeah, yes, you need to check your control codes even even I need to do it, yeah. So, uh, of course, I have discussed in the past, like in, in bigger events uh, that we are running, there are not so many controls out in the forest or in the terrain, sorry. Uh, this was a national champs. They had a lot of classes. They had a lot of controls out. So, yeah, I should have checked it. But uh, no, I haven't. I did it in the past, but then, yeah. Well, I, I think I it's, it's like I'm losing time with it, but you don't, so... <laughs> Yeah, but but I I think it, it is a little bit of a trade off because again I'm I'm definitely not a sprint specialist, but it happens sometimes when I'm running a sprint. It's so absorbing, and let's say that the map is really tricky and the course is really well done, and I'm fully absorbed by what's happening around me, and I, I struggle to control everything at the speed I'm running at, and then just looking at the control number, it feels like additional thing that right. is yeah. taking away some precious time from looking at the map which is yeah. so important and it happens definitely that w when i see a control that I, I it's exactly where i was expecting it to be i just don't look at the control this number anymore and don't check it i don't do it in the forest ever i always check the numbers in the forest but on yeah, especially it, in, it in, in relays i really take my time to yeah. to check them so uh <laughs> Yeah, after the German championship there in September, I, I've said to myself, Yannick, you need to check it because this can't happen to, to you anymore. Yeah. All right. Um, what, what are some small tricks that you think you're doing when you're running or interiorizing? Some tricks in terms of um, running the legs, making sure that you don't make any mistakes. Is, that, is there something that comes to my mind? Your mind, you actually mentioned two of them already, right? So. Uh, looking around and checking out the features that you know that you will be running to when you're passing them for the first time, for example, uh, on, on, on the occasion of going to another control or um, making sure that you turn into the right alleyway by checking the things on, on the other side, for example, to help you out. Is there anything else that comes to your mind? Uh, I think if possible, try to make the shortcut, shortcuts here, here and there. Um... For example, on, on squares, there can be a lot of parked cars and it's good to have an overview of where where is the best way to get through them uh, instead of running like in in sharp uh, or in, in curves a bit around. So yep. um, that's the key also. Um, and then 
you use use your strength on the on the right moments there will be easier controls where you can speed up if it's possible um but there are also parts where you need to allow yourself to 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 cool down uh, and and take the right route choice um especially when it when it gets tricky do, do you think you you're good at this last last thing because my experience is well you probably are but my experience is that it's actually very difficult it's easy to speed up, but it's so hard to slow down when you have to, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Because what I felt also is that that sprint is it's like that these 15 minutes, it feels like you're running at your max the the, the whole time. I mean sometimes I've had also before that, oh, this is the last control. <laughs> I need to <laughs> there is a finish and then it's too late maybe to 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 even speed up if 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 possible. So um course that point is good if you're coming to the finish and you're oh i'm already there it means like you have done yeah you were concentrated you have done a good course so um yeah it's it's not so easy as i would i would say uh it's maybe a lot on the on like experience again um but um yeah it's i think there's something that you can learn right yeah yeah all right um, when it comes to practicing the picking picking the route choices outside of the race, you're probably doing quite a lot of that. Uh, what are the tools that you're using and how much time are you spending on uh, learning how to pick the right route choices? Without running? Um, of course, you mean now just not running training. I mean, yes. Yeah, I, I really like to look on, on sprint maps. Um, Especially during the year, you can find a lot of uh, yeah maps from 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 other countries, national champs in in Norway, in Switzerland, or any other bigger event which you couldn't yeah uh, take part yourself. So I'm looking a lot on on maps first without uh, seeing the route choice from the other runners, then comparing the route choice from other runners. Um, so I really like to do that. Um, what I don't like too much about sprint, and that would be a surprise maybe, is the the preparation behind the computer. So I'm not a guy who is doing a lot of Google Street View. Of course, I know exactly what is going to happen, but I'm not spending, like I've heard others who are doing many, many hours behind the computer preparing old map. Uh, that's something I don't do so often. Uh, or so much compared to others. Um, so for me, mostly making some some courses myself on the old map. That's uh, something I do. Uh, but mostly it is looking on, on different kind of maps. And again, that comes also to if I do actually do it myself, also running a lot in different terrains. So both in reality and both behind the computer. Right. And when you're searching for those um, other races to to just have a look at, uh, where do you search for them? Which web pages? Do you uh, use? A lot of via GPS Suverenta. Mm -hmm. There you can find a lot, of course. Um, and then a lot of the bigger countries they have either their their own GPS tracking, and you can find that. Um, on World of O, you can find a lot of maps. Uh, what I also do sometimes is um, looking on my my the maps I have at home from the past, yeah. to stuff like that. And when you when you look at those courses, you of course you like you, you don't check the um, like tracks of other runners first, but uh, you try to find the best route choice yourself. Do you I challenge... would I would first challenge myself and 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 would act like i'm running the course what right. would i do at that point yeah. yes but do, do you do you put any kind of time pressure on yourself while doing that uh of course you can't look like minutes to a course uh, or to one route shows so i try to do that as quickly as possible yes okay right sounds good all right so let's move on to something maybe outside of picking the route choices um this is actually something that my brother asked when i told him that i'm going to be talking with you and he asked if uh, you have any specific type of training that is focused on 
the you know intricacies of running the sprint distance. So maneuverability, maneuverability, and quick changing of the directions, maybe stopping and starting again. Do you do any yeah. training sessions that are aimed since, at that? Since we have touched free, this has become a bit less important in True. my opinion. Yeah, because often you can run through to control. So you can keep a rather high speed the whole time. Yeah. So to be honest, my interval session or my faster running training is mostly quite straightforward at running, either on the track or on the road. Uh, what I have done before is switching directions, for example. That's some sessions I do, not extremely much, but I do some of them where I, for example, do the track uh, track intervals of 400 meters, but I would change direction halfway of after one third, uh, for example. Um, so, uh, but the most specific training for sprint just comes when I do sprint sprint training, when I do yeah. really map training. I think that's the best the best way to 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 practice it. True, and I really like the comment about the uh, uh, touchless system that was introduced because I think it changed a lot, really. And now I think it's more about taking this into so, account when you pick the route choice. So maybe that you don't have to turn around, right? And you approach the control from the right direction so that you can just continue running uh, rather than doing some specific training for uh, stopping and starting. Yeah, of course, now with this touch free, it's just about the right flow, in my opinion. And that could be like running through the control from one way to the other way that you don't need to turn. But again, don't make the mistake thinking, OK, I will run now through the right and then I can pass the control. But if it's we have we have timed it and it, it's only five it's less than five seconds sometimes, even yeah. even much less. So if actually the left route choice where you can run through the control is 20 meters longer, for example, it's 20, 50 meters longer, it's it's not worth to do it. So uh, yeah. always look to the shortest route choice once again, I think, yes. Yeah, it's, it's awesome that you're mentioning it because I was going to ask about it next. Uh, how, how much time does it actually save when you go through the control? And you're saying that it's a little bit less than five seconds. It depends, of course, on on, on the on, speed. On, yeah, yeah, on the speed and on the yeah, also on how much you you're running around. So, yeah, I've noticed even in knockout, I think it's much more uh, decisive because you're running with a lot of other guys there. Mm -hmm. uh, especially if you're not running in the front, uh, this running through is, is is very useful. But in the individual sprint, uh, turning at the control is it's not too bad. Right. But again, it it depends, of course, on the on the leg and on the on on the route choice. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Uh, another tricky question is uh, from what one of my colleagues. From Poland, why do you start all your training sessions at full hours or half past? <laughs> uh, not the full. The full I don't have the time for. It always need to start with a zero or a five. Okay. <laughs> I once started with the full hours, but uh, it was not possible to to keep that. So now I have. Uh, I want to start either or at a five or a zero. <laughs> it's something I started with, and um, yeah. It's hard to stop now with it. <laughs> it's sometimes a bit <laughs> stupid even, especially when I'm waiting or with uh, with other runners. They are, it's very funny if uh, other runners are going with me and they actually do it. They are waiting for me. So that's the, <laughs> that's so funny. <laughs> Where did it come from? How did it start? I don't know. It started at one point. Some people said you have two little problems in your life. So <laughs> you're doing this kind of stuff. I said, yeah, maybe. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it started and then maybe... Uh, yeah, I can't stop with it. <laughs> it's very cool. It's very cool. Um, do you do you do your own um, plans for training sessions, or do you have a coach? I have some coach, so uh, he's helping a lot, especially with uh, with the fast sessions. Uh, 
but of course, after I started the elite and my elite career when I was yeah, around 10, 11 years uh, ago. So I know exactly what what I need and what I should do to achieve the level I want to have. So, uh, but of course, he's helping me with the sessions and he's also actually there to, to time or to motivate. So, all right, cool. Uh, regarding motivation, my next question is about that. And you've already touched on this topic. So, just let me know if you want to add something more to it. I'll just try to quickly summarize. You already said that what motivates you to do orienteering is uh, that you actually like the sport itself and you enjoy the competition with other runners and running fast. Uh, that's why you you like uh, the sprint distances, but you also enjoy traveling and spending time with other volunteers. Is there anything else you want to add to this when it comes to motivation? What keeps you in this sport and you know grinds your gears so that you can put all of those hours of work into training? Uh, of course, the key or the main thing is my my results. Uh, maybe that that makes me like going out in the morning for my first training yeah knowing that yeah this will will help me to get better for my next race uh where i can hopefully try to to win that's very important then like you said yeah just traveling around the world i really enjoy that uh, coming to different maps and different terrains uh, now, another very big motivation is, of course, the European Championship, which will come to Belgium in three years' time. So uh -huh. that's a huge booster of motivation for the coming three years, at least. Yeah. All right. R regarding the traveling, uh, I have another question from another fellow from Poland. Uh, do you remember the Pomorze Sprint Cup competition in Poland last year? And how was it? Uh, I was actually two years ago, I was there. Oh. Or, uh, yeah, no, last year, this year I wasn't there. Yeah, I really, yeah. really like, so it's a competition I would recommend 100%. And I was sad it didn't fit in the program this year, uh, but I hope to be back uh, next year. I, it's really, it was, I was extremely surprised by the how well organized and how good the maps and courses were. So uh, it's a competition. I'm I'm coming for sure back if it's uh, fitting in my program. Awesome! It's good to hear. I think that the organization level of uh, the competitions in Poland is growing and growing every year, and we can be proud of it. Awesome! All right. So approaching yes. approaching the end, um, what do you think uh, that you're currently lacking when it comes to forest racing? So you've already proven yourself as a really top athlete. Uh, on the sprint in the forest you're still um aiming to get to the to the top uh three let's say um and what do you what do you think you still have to fix to be able to reach for those positions i think reaching that level what i have in sprint in forest will be extremely difficult mm -hmm. i have the physical cap capacities i still believe i can do it physically but um, again, what I noticed here in Switzerland is, is the train is, is totally opposite from what I have at home, uh, totally opposite of what I usually do of training or training like uh, each day. So uh, I, I struggled in, in this terrain. And I think agility, and that means the running in the terrain, that's point one. Uh -huh. um, I lose a lot of time and energy with with running in this kind of terrain uh, where I should use that energy with reading the map. So uh, that's already what I notice I'm losing compared to the to the to the best ones in the terrain. Of course, if there is some some terrain which are which is more runnable, uh, my chances are getting much bigger. So um, yeah, I think, it's good I'm here now for training and uh, also I'm, I'm I'm often in Scandinavia for running with my Finnish club and I still believe that all this forest orienteering will also help in, in sprint. Um, again, different experience, different terrains, different maps. Uh, you will just get stronger. It's a lot of climbing here. So uh, yeah. my body is getting used to that. Um, so, but I think in the end, to be honest, 
I think sprint will be my my main focus and my main goal. Okay, well, um, it absolutely makes sense. Nobody has to be focusing on everything. And uh, you said that your that the results are driving your passion as well and your motivation. So it absolutely makes sense to focus on something that you're already good at, but you still can be aiming for the top, right? Yeah, I think especially forest relay, I enjoy that a lot. Especially running first leg, I I, I think it's very fun. Uh, also the middle distance, uh, the train we have done here in training yesterday, was very relevant for what will be in World Championship next year, middle and relay, and it's extremely technical and extremely difficult. So, yeah, I think it will be pure pure enjoyment to 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 actually already just run it. So, um, yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to to prepare a bit more more for that as well. Perfect. All right, last question. What do you think is the most important skill for an orienteer to have? Uh, you need to be very flexible. Yeah, very flexible and very, yeah. Every course, every terrain, every race is different. And uh, experience, maybe that's uh, different. And what I have said also before to people in Belgium, why I achieved now after so many years this, this level in sprint orienteering is just the experience of doing a lot of traveling over the past years and uh, going to different races. Uh, don't be afraid of going to the races where there are tough competition. Um, because if you always compete or, or train against yourself or against your national team members, it's it's good. But I think you need to go also for higher. Uh, and I think that that's that's the key in, in orienteering. Yeah, I absolutely agree. All right. Thanks a lot, Yannick, for taking the time and speaking with me and through me with everyone else. Uh, for everyone that is watching, if you've enjoyed the talk, give us a, a like and subscribe to the channel and of course if you want to have um, the talks with someone else let me know in the comments i'm really curious which orienteers you want to talk with and yannick for yourself i wish you even more success for the upcoming Thank years uh, hopefully a golden medal on the world champs finally and, you know, do your best in the Belgium European Championships as well. I'm pretty sure that... Yeah, that's, uh, I think that's one of the main uh, main goals for the for the coming, uh, coming years. Yeah, I don't think it's going to get any easier, you know. You're, you're not getting younger and you're at the age where... No, know, no, no, that's but... what I would say. Uh, getting the gold medal is not, not easy. Yeah. Especially I'm not getting younger. Of course, my experience is getting bigger, so... Sure. Uh, Daniel Hoopman, uh, he showed again last weekend that uh, his experience is extremely high and uh, exactly. winning there the World Cup was impressive. Exactly. So that's what I wish for you as well. I'm rooting all the way and all best. Thank you. Thank you very much. So that was fun. A lot of interesting points made by Yannick. And did he inspire me to go and run some sprints? Yeah, he definitely did, but I'm still going to go and do the night race and then this middle distance right after that. No sprint racing this weekend again for me, uh, but I'm only 40, so I think I still have time to pick up sprint running somewhere in the future. Yeah, but that's just me. Hopefully you will have a lot of fun as well during the weekend and the upcoming days doing both forest and sprint orienteering and when you will be doing sprint orienteering remember about all the things that we've mentioned during the talk with Yannick because I think there were lots of valid and important interesting points. Hopefully this was enjoyable and this was also informative and you've learned something and if you did then just apply it into your orienteering career and I'll see you in some of the next videos. Take care!